y'all about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Witness the strength. Street knowledge. 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 Street Welcome back, welcome back. It's me, Majid Nawaz, uh, the Radical, and with me, as always, my brother, the infamous Usman Raja. And today on Warrior Creed, we're speaking to you about Nazis in the Canadian Parliament. It is uh, absolutely unbelievable. Those of you who uh, have just joined this stream will see this particular meme uh, set as the default for the stream before you press play. That's because that's the meme of the uh, Radical Media article that this stream is based on. Here is the headline for that article. It's called, and this is not a joke, Canadian Parliament grants standing ovation to actual Nazi SS officer from World War II. And that is after Zelensky gave a speech in the Canadian Parliament. So this is what has just happened. This, no, it is not a joke. That you can see there, there are articles dated 25th, of September. Yes, the Canadian Parliament has actually just granted a standing ovation to an actual World War II Nazi SS officer who's 98 years old. And that was after Zelensky gave a speech with Trudeau present and the entire parliament across the political divide stood and gave multiple standing ovations for that Nazi collaborator Zelensky. But that we've become accustomed to. However, uh, what's made the news now is that, uh, exactly as we just mentioned to you, uh, that the Canadian Parliament gave this particular Nazi SS officer a standing ovation. That news was first reported online by Unity News Network. As you can see there, a 98-year-old was given a standing ovation by the Canadian Parliament during Zelensky's speech. He was hailed as a hero for fighting against the Russians. Uh, Yaroslav Hunk fought for the 14th division of the Waffen SS. No, this is, as I say, not a joke. I'm going to show you uh, the video of precisely what we've just described in the Canadian Parliament. But before we do again, to uh, reassure you that this is not a joke, here is news from sources that many of you are used uh, to seeing because it's a corporatist news source. But such was the insult and shock uh, that reverberated from what's just happened in the Canadian Parliament, that even the lying corporatist media has had to acknowledge uh, that this is an incredible faux pas. So here's the Associated Press, or AP, as they're known, uh, with the headline, Leader of Canada's House of Commons apologizes for honoring man who fought for Nazis. And uh, just to show you a quote from the article, just so that you can see exactly what's gone on, um, here it is. I'll read it for you. This is from that um, Associated Press or AP article, uh, the headline of which we just showed you. And it says, the Speaker of Canada's House of Commons apologized Sunday for recognizing uh, a, uh, a man who fought for a Nazi military unit during World War II. Just after Ukrainian President uh, Zelensky delivered an address in the House of Commons on Friday, Canadian lawmakers gave 98-year-old Yuroslav Hunka a standing ovation when Speaker Anthony Rota drew attention to him. Rota introduced Hunka as a war hero who fought for the 1st Ukrainian Division. Uh, continuing in the article, the 1st Ukrainian Division was also known as the Waffen-SS Galatia Division, or the SS 14th Waffen Division, a voluntary unit that was under the command of the Nazis. The article continues. The Friends of Simon Wiesenthal Center for Holocaust Studies issued a statement Sunday saying the division, quote, was responsible for the mass murder of innocent civilians with a level of brutality and malice that is unimaginable. And finally, uh, to continue from the article, members of parliament from all parties rose to applaud Hunker. So this was an all-party uh, incident that has just occurred in Canada. The, the, the post-millennial also has reported it in the following way. Uh, the parliament in Canada provided a loud all-party standing ovation Friday to Yuroslav Hunker, a 98-year-old who served with the Nazi Waffen-SS during the Second 
World War. This is not something, as I say, uh, that is in dispute. This actually happened. Um, and we're going to show you the video now of this happening. And we're going to show you Trudeau uh, and his attempted apology. But here is the Canadian Parliament. Uh, for the first time since World War II, a Western Parliament rises in praise and standing ovation for an actual Nazi SS officer. His speech received at least a dozen standing ovations. There was also one for this man, a 98-year-old Ukrainian-Canadian who fought for Ukrainian independence against the Russians during the Second World War. Now, again, as I say, this isn't uh, some theory. Uh, this isn't some conspiracy or perhaps even uh, to give ourselves the benefit of the doubt, uh, some forecast that it's going to happen or this is likely to happen because Ukraine is full of Nazis, as we've been saying, such as Azov, the Nazi battalion that was formally incorporated into the Ukrainian National Guard. Therefore, the Ukrainian National Guard is actually Nazi. Uh, this isn't any theory. What we're just presenting to you here is is beyond dispute. And, and, and it's so much beyond dispute that uh, Canada's so-called leader, Trudeau, has had to publicly apologize for what's just happened yesterday. It's extremely upsetting that this happened. The speaker, the speaker has uh, acknowledged his mistake uh, and has apologized. Uh, but this is something that is deeply embarrassing to the Parliament of Canada and, by extension, to all Canadians particularly of Jewish MPs and all members of the Jewish community across the country are uh, celebrating Yom, or commemorating Yom Kippur today. Uh, I think it's going to be really important that all of us push back against Russian propaganda, Russian disinformation, and continue our steadfast and unequivocal support for Ukraine, uh, as uh, we did last week with announcing uh, further measures to stand with Ukraine in uh, Russia's illegal war against it. Now, as you saw there, uh, he has said apology, uh, put that in quotation marks. Of course, you didn't hear the word sorry. Uh, and you also saw him seamlessly move from first admitting the mistake to then mentioning randomly uh, Yom Kippur and then going from Yom Kippur somehow in his mind, connecting it to Russian propaganda. And the conclusion after a Nazi received standing ovation in the Canadian Parliament immediately after Zelensky's speech with Zelensky in attendance, by the way, raising his fist in celebration at said Nazi, right? And yet the, uh, the conclusion that Trudeau decides to draw from this particular incident is that we must all resist Russian propaganda. That was, as you just heard there, Trudeau's conclusion. Uh, now, uh, we've been here on warrior creed warning about the connection between our funding of the Ukraine war uh, and between Zelensky and the Azov battalion or the Nazis there in Ukraine, uh, having been formally integrated into Ukrainian National Guard, all, by the way, funded by Ukrainian oligarch billionaire uh, Kolomoisky, uh, who was also Zelensky's boss when Zelensky was this uh, comedian on Kolomoisky's TV channel before he became president. We've been warning about this for a long time. Uh, here is our warning on Tucker Carlson, uh, which was a long time ago. You'll see from the uh, lack of facial hair, hair how long ago this particular warning was. All of these warnings appear at least at the time to have fallen on deaf ears. I don't know if any longer this is possible to avoid, but note from this particular warning we gave out many, many months, years ago, that we, we were not warning about neo-Nazis. We said we were warning about actual Nazis. And this is what's just happened with an actual Nazi receiving a standing ovation in the Canadian Parliament. Here we are with Tucker Carlson. This is so long ago. It's before Tucker Carlson was even cancelled off Fox News. We've got to ask this question that you've got a country led by a man uh, who even before the war, Axios, uh, the Guardian, uh, the Atlantic Council, all of them were reporting that Zelensky, even though he ran on an anti-corruption ticket, uh, has, through the uh, Panama Papers and other such leaks, uh, has stashed his millions offshore like most corrupt oligarchs have. And so even before the war, his corruption was known. And then you fast forward to what he's done over this weekend with the banning of 11 
opposition parties. And I want to note at this stage that uh, he banned these opposition parties, including, as you mentioned, Tucker, the second largest in his parliament, while the Nazi elements, and I use the word Nazi, not neo-Nazi, because these are actual Nazis that aren't neo in any sense. They're the continuation of Nazis as we know them and study them in history. Uh, and Bandera, the man that they uh, revere, uh, was actually a Nazi, and they've made him into a national hero and icon. The Nazis in Ukraine have not been banned uh, by uh, Zelensky. And so this is a very interesting point, that you've got a man that's, uh, that we're hailing as a democratic icon who's fighting for freedom and democracy in our way of life, banning all opposition parties, controlling the, uh, through the state the media narrative while refusing not only to ban Nazis, but having, after not banning them, incorporated them into his state as of as a battalion formally serves in the Ukrainian National Guard. Now, people say to that in response, yeah, but Majid, there are racists in every country. No, the analogy here is, imagine Tucker in America, the KKK had a formal battalion in the US military. That's what we've got with swastikas and Nazi insignia inside uh, the Ukrainian army. And then that was on Tucker Carlson. Osman, you probably remember that particular uh, appearance. And you were standing right here uh, with me together, both of us at the time, trying to warn the world uh, about that. And you will remember how particularly uh, in those days it was difficult because it was easy for those who are pro-war, the war hawks, to accuse anybody trying to inject some nuance into that argument of being a pro-Putin uh, propagandist. But we didn't relent. We carried on uh, all the way up until four weeks ago even uh, on Patrick Bet David's show, again, uh, specifying that we weren't talking about neo-Nazis. We were talking about actual Nazis. And lo and behold, an actual Nazi just received a standing ovation in the Canadian Parliament with Trudeau and all party approval in presence. So we, we were specifically forecasting this very uh, sp specific, exact and precise danger uh, of the revival of actual Nazis in the West uh, for the first time since World War II. Actual Nazism receiving uh, applause and celebration in so-called uh, democracies. So have a listen to this warning from four weeks, uh, sorry, four months ago on uh, Patrick Bet David's Valuetainment podcast. Take Ukraine and the Azov Nazis, who aren't even neo-Nazis, they're actual Nazis. They come from the Bandera tradition, which is the surviving elements of Nazism and the collaborators in, uh, in, that, uh, in Ukraine from the era of uh, uh, Nazism, up until today, they are still there. Now, Azov, now every country has races, but Azov is a battalion that was integrated into the Ukrainian army and, and, and formally became their National Guard. So the Ukrainian National Guard is the Azov battalion. Azov are Nazis. This is not in dispute. This is not an opinion. This is a matter of fact. I, for 10 years, ran the world's first and leading counter-extremism organization. It was our job to brief prime ministers and presidents on who is an extremist. I have met in that pursuit uh, George Bush, Tony Blair, David Cameron, more heads of state than I can imagine, one-on-one -on -one talking like this. I am telling you, as of our Nazis, this is not in uh, dispute. It's a fact. Uh, they have Nazi insignia, and yet we're sending weapons and funds to Nazis who are integrated into the Ukrainian army. That and those weapons and funds we're sending have not ceased. Here is the New York Times uh, reporting that in the, his European tour that he's just come off of before he went to Canada, Zelensky reaps billions more in promised military aid. That's what he's doing, by the way. He's touring the country and all these parliaments. If you remember, when he came to Britain, was smart if you remember, he also got a standing ovation. Uh, thankfully, we escaped the uh, shameful and embarrassing spectacle of actual Nazi SS officers receiving a standing ovation in our parliament. Uh, I can't imagine how that would feel if that were to happen. And my... Uh, my, my, my commiserations to the can good Canadian people because it's humiliating, it's embarrassing. Canada was our ally in World War II and we fought the Nazis and the Russians, though it's a separate country, fought the Nazis with us. And then we went into a Cold War with Russia. Fair enough. Uh, it was the USSR at the time. But the actual hot war was against the Nazis. What's just happened in Canada's parliament is a celebration and an applause of the enemy in the heart of our democracy. Now, any other word for that uh, we'd be thinking of would be treachery and treason. Because whoever facilitated this, you saw Trudeau, Trudeau there attempt to throw the Speaker of the House under the bus and blame him. But 
as you and I, Osman, we know at least, that nothing as severely embarrassing and humiliating as a Nazi SS officer receiving celebratory applause in the House of Commons is a decision that ever gets made by one man. This man, who did the background checks on this SS officer and everybody else in attendance? Because I know for sure that when I go through Heathrow Airport, and I'm randomly stopped and checked to make sure that I'm not randomly carrying explosives, there is at least some form of uh, security theater at work to make sure people feel safe. What's going on in the Canadian parliament that a Nazi SS officer can be this close to a Jewish head of state? Think about it. Do you think that that kind of security lapse would be done deliberately, uh, accidentally? And so it does beg the question, how did this Nazi SS officer get into Canada's parliament? It is incredibly humiliating and uh, it sets uh, perhaps a historic humiliation on the Western world collectively, because, as I say, the first time that Nazism has been officially applauded in any Canadian, uh, any Western parliament. Now, they're going to obviously say it was a mistake. But as I say, how does something like this get through uh, all of the security checks? Um, Especially because, as you've just witnessed with all of the videos we've shown you, we have been warning about precisely these people, the actual Nazis. Now, I'm going to offer an explanation as to how this is possible, that this could happen. And the explanation revolves around the fact that we in the West aren't as, um, uh, aren't as strange to Nazism as you may imagine. And that's because of something called Operation Paperclip. After World War II, uh, this is simply a historical fact. Operation Paperclip, this by the way is from history.com. It's 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 on, <laughs> on their website even. It's not in dispute. Operation Paperclip, you see there from a the subheading, uh, uh, this controversial top secret US intelligence program brought Nazi German scientists to America to harness the brain power for Cold War initiatives. So after we defeated the Nazis, we cut cooperated. Our security services cooperated with German Nazi scientists, brought them over to the Americas. Britain's security services were involved too. And we used them to try and defeat the USSR. But what happened to them subsequently is my point, not whether or not that was a wise tactic of war. This particular article from history.com that I just showed you continues, and you see the quote there, because one of the most well-known recruits was Werner von Braun, the technical director at the uh, Peenemund Army Research Center in Germany. He was instrumental in developing the lethal V2 rocket that devastated England during the war. Right, So clearly, this guy didn't really like England, was a Nazi. Operation Paperclip meant that he was taken to America. The article continues. Von Braun later became director of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center and the chief architect of the Saturn V launch vehicle, which eventually propelled two dozen American astronauts to the moon. Right, fair to say that that Nazi Von Braun was no junior scientist in NASA. He was the chief scientist responsible for the Saturn V rocket launch program in NASA that NASA claims was responsible in the end for the entire uh, mission to the moon. So NASA's admitting that their most successful in terms of media terms operation was headed and run by a Nazi. The article continues, look at the bottom paragraph. Although defenders of the clandestine operation argue that the balance of power could have easily shifted to the Soviet Union during the Cold War if these Nazi scientists were not brought to the United States, opponents point to the ethical cost of ignoring their abhorrent war crimes without punishment or accountability. And I, you know, we put it to you that that ethical cost is the cognitive infiltration of white supremacists and Nazis in other words, globalists, because those eugenicists, let, let's make this very clear so that you don't think I'm saying something that I actually am saying. I'm saying what you think I'm saying is my point. We, the globalists in the Western world, we are run by those globalists who control our societies, our life, our countries. Those globalists are in power. Those are the eugenicists that were behind the COVID mandates, behind the gene editing technology that they try to force every one of us to take. And if not, we were locked into our homes and worse, lost our jobs. They are eugenicists. Those eugenicists in charge also happen to be Nazis. That's why they're eugenicists, because they are seeking to fiddle with our DNA for the purposes of creating the perfect human specimen. It's why they are transhumanists. It's why they want to transcend the human race. It's why all this trans bullshit has emerged recently. These eugenicists seek to alter our DNA so that we may transcend humanity using technology. It's why we call them 
technocratic transhumanists and globalists. These are the people in charge and their ideology is Nazism. And that is the cognitive, cognitive infiltration that I'm arguing has come from Operation Paperclip into our societies. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe what I'm saying, that what we're dealing with is a bunch of Nazi eugenicists who are globalists and who use the trans debate for the purposes of their transhumanist technocratic project. Yes, listen to my words. I'm being very precise in what I'm saying. And the words I'm using are specific on purpose. I am alleging that we are being run by a bunch of Nazi eugenicists who are in power. They are globalists and they seek to use technocratic transhumanism to try and transcend the human race. They believe in racial supremacy because they believe in their ability to create the perfect human by using science to interfere with our DNA. In other words, they believe in playing God. Those people who are in power create these leaders who are currently in charge through a global system of blackmail. They hold compromat on our politicians through that uh, blackmail so that they can have them do their eugenicist, globalist, Nazi, technocratic project. And that program of compromat and blackmail is run through, as Klaus Schwab stated and confessed at Harvard University, and as we uh, revealed on uh, that episode with Rogan over a year ago, they use the uh, Young Leaders Program in the World Economic Forum those young people that they've got compromat over and blackmail, they use the Young Leaders Program in the World Economic Forum to, 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 to nourish those young leaders that they have blackmail compromat on and to eventually, as Klaus Schwab said, penetrate the cabinets of the world to place their agents who are compromised in various positions of power. And Trudeau is one of them. He is a young leader from the World Economic Forum. Canada was one of the countries that Klaus Schwab named in that Harvard University speech when he said, we've penetrated the cabinets around the world. Who's the we? The globalist, technocratic, transhumanists, uh, uh, Nazi eugenicists. Now, now uh, when I mention Trudeau, again, remember, uh, this isn't a theory. Trudeau is the kind of person that would fit the bill when we're talking about Nazi eugenesis. Here he is, according to the BBC, making it very clear that he cannot even remember how many times he dressed up in blackface. And yes, these are real pictures. That's a real article. And this really is the Prime Minister of Canada dressed up in blackface, thinking that it's funny. So when I say we're dealing with a bunch of Nazi eugenicists who have a globalist agenda and wish to use technocratic... Uh, uh, transhumanism in order to force the human race through gene interference to, to transcend what they believe is humanity through their uh, eugenics program, are you then surprised that a Nazi was officially applauded in Canada's parliament? Are you even surprised that we're sending all this military aid to Nazis in Ukraine, actual uh, Nazis? And are you then uh, even any longer uh, left with any doubt when, according to the Daily Mail, as it states here, Putin has made that specific and direct claim that the West installed a Jewish Zelensky as president of Ukraine to cover up for the glorification of Nazism. That's what's going on. It is a, uh, inc I'm, as you can see, I'm incredibly distressed uh, in, in, in a, not in a very bad way, but I, I think this is a, a very bad uh, situation to be in where Nazism is being applauded in one of our parliaments. It is as simple as that. This is not something that hasn't happened. Uh, since uh, World War II. And we're looking at why it happened. Forget Trudeau now attempting to blame uh, the Speaker of, uh, of the Commons. Imagine it was in Congress. Imagine it was in the House of Parliament in London, right? And imagine Rishi Sunak here or Biden in America simply try to blame the Speaker. The question is, how the fuck does a Nazi SS officer get in that building in the first place? Where are your background checks? What's going on? Who's, who's approving the guest list and making sure that this is... Um, of course, if you're celebrating Azov in Ukraine, you can see how this uh, slips through. And just to reassure everybody,
that was video of Trudeau in blackface, just so you can you know, understand those photos weren't doctored. There's the video for you from a, a Canadian news source. And, and that's the same Trudeau, by the way, who when the, if, Simon, if you remember the Canada Freedom Truckers who were protesting against COVID mandates, remember we, uh, we were in touch with them as well, had a couple of them on our shows. Those Canada Freedom Truckers, their only gripe was they didn't want COVID mandates. And Trudeau comes along, the same Trudeau, in blackface that you just saw, the same Trudeau who leads the parliament where a Nazi officer, SS officer, has just received a round of a uh, standing ovation, that same Trudeau accused those Canadian truckers of being racists. This is the hypocrisy uh, that these leaders engage in because they are everything they accuse you of. Have a look at this. Yes, there is a small fringe element in this country that is angry, that doesn't believe in science, that is lashing out with racist, misogynistic attacks, and I know will not allow those voices, those special interest groups, those protesters who can, I don't even want to call them protesters, those anti-vaxxer mobs. Yes. Now, uh, a couple of weeks ago on uh, on on Warrior Creed, we even had an episode in which we warned of the return of Nazism. If uh, if you go back to the Rumble site for Warrior Creed, you will see this episode. It's called the Return of Nazism. That's the meme for the episode, and you can see it's one hour sixteen minutes ten seconds long. And in that episode, we directly warned about the return of Nazism. It was after the Azov supporting Nazis were demonstrating in Florida and were caught on camera. And Osman, if you warn in that, if you remember in that episode, the return of Nazism, we specifically warned and said the Black Sun rune, which is has been appropriated, just like the swastika has been appropriated. These are actually ancient runes that Nazis have appropriated because everything is appropriated. But we said in that episode, the return of Nazism, we specifically warned about the return and said the Black Sun rune, which Azov is using, will return. There will be some very visible displays of Nazism going forward. And as you've just seen, uh, one of them has just happened in Canada's parliament. And it is indeed a travesty. Well, Smart, over to you. Okay. So do you recall, Marjid, when during the uh, Bosnian conflict, they had information that was... Um, well researched and brought up about the ex uh, mufti of Jerusalem who'd set up his own SS unit in Bosnia. So we had this. We, we, right. yeah. So the reason I want to make that that point is that when we're talking about research and knowing what's happened in terms of uh, geopolitical evolution, when people go. Internationally, everyone's very aware of where certain, where the Nazis went in and created uh, created SS units uh, from people that were vulnerable to that um, vulnerable to that uh, uh, that type of. Um, divisive uh, reactionary motivation and the reason I use those terms the reason I use exactly those terms is because this is what's happening right now when we talk about creating that intersectionality so what, what the the reason the the Nazis were able to go in and create these uh, SS units within uh, these regions was because it, it, would, it would often be Picking on the separation, yeah, picking on the identity. Now, the point is here that if the Canadians wanted to defend the fact that they brought this soldier in, they'd say they the argument could be made that um, these were separatists fighting the Russians. Which the reason I'm, I'm explaining this is because we've got the same discussion. Well, the same point being made about the Azov 
brigade within uh, uh, the Ukrainian army that um, right now they're fi- they're fighting the good fight and the ends justifies the means. Mm. This is a 98 year old who, if you reframe it, was fighting as a Ukrainian freedom fighter. When you actually look at the facts of it, he was part of an SS unit. And now we get to the point that um, we made earlier, Margin, that these are actual Nazis. Yeah, the Azov Brigade has an unbroken chain of evolution going back through to the Nazis. That, and that matters. Yeah, that matters. Because, because just as it matters to us that we are very proud of our own chain uh, through Sheikh Ali behind you, all the way to Prophet Muhammad, right? Yeah. Because what we say is all knowledge is experiential. Yeah. And, and so authenticity yeah. and the narrative, a, a legitimate narrative is very different to an imagined um, an imagined connection to something. An authentic, uh, a, an authentic connection also has depth. Mm. Yeah. And, and in the context then of the Nazis, how, how, how does it matter in your view? In the context of the Nazis, what we've got with, um, I mean, this is, this is straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak, that individuals in Ukraine, even previous, previous to all of this conflict, saw themselves as ca- still carrying that b- baton of, um, uh, the Nazi movement, that the Nazi movement was still alive, the last remnants of it was still alive, and that's why. I mean, you have to think to yourself: the amount of support a group would have to have to actually have a battalion within a national force. Mm. And do, do you remember when they were dipping those bullets in pig's blood? Um, yeah. Well, I remember all the way back, uh, Margie, when we were. Uh, look at the look at the evolution of the right wing um, all across Europe, and yeah. then um, because obviously when we when we looked at the whole phenomenon, we looked at what what was termed reciprocal radicalization, mm. and we saw this phenomenon being talked about, which was the the concept of uh, the white jihad, where we were saying okay. So one of the things that was talked about was this phenomenon of the right-wing elements taking the methodology of the jihadists and creating their own movements. But then that wasn't what we, when we came across to looking at what was happening in Ukraine, it was like, no, no, that's not what's happening here. Mm. What's happening here is there's an actual group that is, um, that sees itself being, uh, and when I say offshoot of the Nazis, I literally mean, you know, a seed that's dropped. Yeah, the, the word itself means yeah, a seed that's dropped and an offshoot. Yeah, so they have a yeah. direct uh, uh, experiential or human connection to the original Nazis that fought in World War Two. Yeah, and um, that was very different to what we were seeing um, from this perspective of say, group, uh, Scandinavian groups who were taking Nordic gods and Nordic mythology and bringing that into the idea of uh, the white race pre-even Semitic involvement. Mm. So, so the concept of Semitic involvement, Christianity being an issue. Mm. Do you see what I mean? So that was... When when you look at the phenomenon of reciprocal radicalization, that was this this is the nuanced discussion that was going on within it. Now what we see with this is we see two interesting points that both center on Canada and both within the last month. One point is this. The other point is of a uh, Sikh uh, activist leader. Yes. Who was um, a- a- allegedly assassinated um allegedly under, by india right yeah by india under the orders of modi now anyone who looks at the hindutva movement if they once again if you go back to world war ii 
the Hindutva movement was actually its formalization and its uh, and the structure of it comes during World War II with with their support of the Nazis. You see, the Nazi movement. Yeah, what people look at, what people misunderstand with um, the Nazis is that the concept of Aryanism. They keep thinking uh, blonde hair and blue eye. No, no. What it's referring to is Indo-European, which is actually going back to your, the, it goes back into the Aryan caste system. That's right. So, well, and the you Aryan, see how Modi's Hinduism can suit that very well. Well, it, it, Modi's Hinduism is exactly, supposedly, because you have to remember the, um, the first point that we have to put, put across is there's no such thing as a, I mean, Hinduism is a word that the um, the British invented. Then there was no such thing as a homogenized faith system. Yeah. That's why we're saying Modi's Hinduism. He's attempting but, to homogenize and politicize Hinduism into a modern form of religious dogma. Yeah, and the thing with this is, Modi, that if we look at um, the the Nazi understanding of this, you have to remember the Aryan the the caste system is based on the Aryan bloodline. Yeah. So. Brahman, uh, Kshatriya, which is the warrior caste, uh, Jat, which is the farmers, and then all the way down to, into this, uh, um, the untouchables. And it, it and um, you've got gradients as you go through. Yeah. Now, the point is with this that the swastika itself, this is, if you look at what Gob Gobels was looking at with this, the the swastika itself is uh is taken from um india that's taken from the old uh it's an old hindu symbol mm. yeah the the chevrons are the other way around but it is it is definitely it not. is it's exactly the same symbol and uh the reason for that symbol is because um uh Goebbels used to carry around a, a, a copy of the Bhagavad Gita with him. So one of the points with this is that even... And look to the origins of the BJP and the founding ideologue of, of Modi's BJP and uh, 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 RSS. He was yeah, a RSS, so, Nazi. Now, now, this, what we're getting with this is when you start looking at this, when we're talking about Nazism, people start thinking, oh, no, no, it's just, it's a small problem. But what we've got is this thing's been reinvented mm. and in a in a more organized and subversive way i mean the fact that we're talking about ukraine and that in ukraine right now what happens when you've got an organized nazi group that is supported internationally because what we've got right now is you've got the Azov Brigade T-shirts being sold on yeah. Facebook and everywhere else, yeah. and you can see them um, every so often. Streets of London, in the suburbs, you can see so, uh, some angry-looking kid with uh, tattoos and an Azov T-shirt walking down the street. Mm. Yeah, the same way that um, um, you might see a Chechen Akmat T-shirt. Yeah. In London somewhere. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? That the, each thing has its significance it, 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 in what it's representing. Yeah. It, except there's no uh, moral equivalence between those two. The Chechen Ahmed t shirt is in no way comparable. Yes, yeah, no way. But yeah, to the, what to ends the up happening with this of those, uh, of those symbols that the Azov have taken is basically Nazism. Yeah, it's Nazism. But the, 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 problem, the problem we've now got is reframing of history. Yeah. Yeah. What Marge has just explained there about the, from the eugenics perspective and even from the euthanasia perspective. And look at Canada with euthanasia, Osman. Yeah. And I'm this is the thing, Marge, that refresh people's memory. In Canada now, what you've got is you've got legalized euthanasia. Now, the issue with this is that, guys, what, what we're doing is we're getting, when you look at 
the ideological systems in themselves as well. Like, why is it that we go from the idea of uh, from the from the Semitic idea of life being sacred to a level of consumerism and attack on on the so we we had this term called traditional uh, traditionalism now but the the traditionalism that we have now is coming from two two points now this relates to this nazism now uh, uh, margin yeah so we talked about the tra traditionalism finds its root with a french philosopher called rene Guénon. yeah and rene Guénon talked about the the idea that the that the starting point with society was that yeah, this this concept of the symbiosis whereby the individual could nurture themselves yeah the, so it was always nurtured for betterment from the collective perspective yeah and there was a there were and what he, what he saw within that was it was looking for the traditional brotherhoods in that sense and, he, and where did he find that with um sufism so rene again on uh, as we being uh being someone that's actually um one of the teachers that that we could we we can talk about from an authorized uh, uh oral tradition perspective rene again on in the end moved to egypt died as sheikh abdul wahid Basically, other people who Sufi in Egypt. That's the, Sufi in Egypt. Of, that's the founding father of the modern day traditionist movement. That even modern day traditionist even movement. Russia and Putin have adopted uh, through what's his name, um, uh, Alexander Dugan. Dugan, yeah, Dugan himself took this from Genon. Took this from yeah. So he he he's learned from reading Genon. This this that hence the empowerment of. The Naqshbandis in Dagestan, Chechnya, Chechnya, they're seen, they're Russian, they're Muslim, and there's no conflict. Yeah. Now, on the other side of that, you had another individual who read Genon and found it difficult, which was Julius Evola. Now, Evola is known as one of the people that Hitler read as well. He influenced the nazi ideology yeah now here's an interesting point with this because the germans come from it's a the, there's an indo-european lineage there yeah which is there within the uh, germanic language as well yeah now the point with this was that one of the initiatory lines that rene Genon talked about and then evola looked at as well was exactly this which which was the advaita vedanta which existed within hinduism or what is now there's no homogenized thing as hinduism yeah. but we have to, we're going we're to get use it yeah. we're going to use the term to situate something yeah but the point was with this that when evola looks at it he sees that well actually in europe he there's no initiatory brotherhood so he falls back into a form of individualism yeah but it's still a traditionalist understanding but it's a form of individualism which now when people are looking at this they look at Nietzsche and Nietzsche's criticism of Christianity and you can see the echo with within Nazism of the critique of Christianity can't you mm -hmm. the idea that um the God within the Christian understanding is actually taking away the the concept of the regal mm. and the sacred. Yeah, the 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 warrior and uh, 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 the warrior and um, I was going to use the word uh, well, uh, and the priest pre preacher type of thing, yeah. but the uh, um, but the idea behind it was uh, the the concept of the the whole man the one who was uh, um merciful within but majestic outside mm. yeah so the regal and sake but the the concept of the far the son dying for this 
the son dies for the sins of man for the father doesn't didn't fit in with that model of regal and sacred yeah so the nazi concept itself goes back back to so the Aryan concept itself goes back to what it goes back to a very rooted within the bloodline yep why it's rooted within the bloodline is because within the traditional Aryan systems you had the priestly caste then you had the warrior caste which represented the shoulders of the gods but also the concept of genetic inheritance and going directly back to certain characters so um with the Bhagavad Gita you could trace certain warrior castes going all the way back to Arjun the disciple of Krishna mm. do you see what I mean and the point with this is that the idea was that if now this is all going to make sense now guys that if you were descended from this bloodline and you were initiated that once again there was a divine quality in that initiation which now takes us back to what we were talking about with the with the nazi with that nazi ideology and we we talked about india we talked about we talked about with germany but once again what we get with this is it's also once again a mutant child of the traditionalism yep yep so remember what we talked about one of the, some of the most dangerous things are things that have a modicum of truth and what i mean by modicum of truth is that especially nowadays where we see uh liberalism gone mad it's like the um the idea that someone's taken over a small town and they've got rid of the road signs because they didn't actually understand how the road system worked and that yeah they just picked where where, where they were going to put the traffic lights on yeah. and for, for 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 listeners and viewers the road signs here being the gender descriptors yeah well the gender descriptors and everything else yeah because the problem is the words yes it means something but it only means something so you can get somewhere else yeah that's what the whole point of a sentence is yeah. yeah the, the, there's there's what's said within the sentence but if i'm speaking to fuzz fuzz because fuzz fuzz is your unique pronoun then how does fuzz fuzz did this when i relate it to someone else to explain god it, mm. we keep it simple mm keep it very 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 simple to the point where humanity's already well not humanity here in the west we're already autistic enough mm. because we're sitting in front of screens we can no longer keep eye contact with people we can no longer read body language we can no longer read tone um people are more comfortable texting because yeah, I've got a legal record now and I can, I think that I can pretty much throw the structure at you while validating the structure to myself mm. and keeping a record, mm. but there's no real interaction. Mm. Now, what happens with this is, this leads us on to our, our next point with this, which is we're very unaware of what's going on internationally we sit in our own little bubble thinking that everywhere everyone else is perceiving things the way we're perceiving them and what that means is that um the army strolls into a country and those people are thinking oh they're here to liberate us but they still rebel against this liberating army no 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 what actually happens is people who were getting on with their lives see an invading army and they react by fighting back and then they 
end up getting bombed out and then we end up decades later and this is as individuals speaking 20 years after 9-11 happened 20 years of being out there and going how come this problem keeps getting compounded and what we're seeing with this now is that why is it that over 50 years after the world war world wars we're sitting here right now talking about nazis yeah you have to think about that margin over 50 years later in this great future that we live in the um what we're learning is that what's been turned against us it, it even the language has been turned against you to the point where yeah, you know, Edward Barnes could come along and say the the nephew of Freud post the World War, and anyone that wants to check check up on this, there's a, a famous book called Propaganda. Barnes was the inventor of propaganda. The um, Barnes is one of the first tasks he was given was to be able to try and sell cigarettes to women. So he said, okay, the way we're going to do this is by making the cigarette into a phallic symbol. But the point with this is if you look, the point I'm making with this is that you have to really first um, concentrate reality into that Freudian perspective of the libido being the, 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 the cause for motivation. For the cause for it but but what you what you do with that is you first have to create the individuals now that that's related around language it's related around structure so the concept of structuralism so structuralism's literally literally saying that look words have been given their meanings in order to manipulate you in a certain way which is what judith butler is saying about the transgenderism the point i'm making here martin is this where 50 years after the world war this is this is what we're seeing now that the language the structure everything has been moving individuals in a certain direction and where while we're sitting here right now judging other places in those other places like Ukraine, you've had Nazis probably having Frankfurter parties in the, in the garden, drinking good German beer. While um, so that's what's been going on over there. While we sit here and argue about what it means to be a woman, while somewhere else you've got while in Russia right now. Um, Putin has been intelligent enough to figure out that, well, actually, if I want good Russian civilians, I'll empower them from their, tri from their traditional identity. So hence, you know, when Khabib fights on the UFC and is celebrated within... Celebrate for his manners and gentlemanly conduct. You then see him shaking hands with Putin because Putin's taking funds from that central part of Russia that's going into these Caucasus to create citizens. The reason I'm making these points, guys, is because we've been on we've done these presentations to uh quite recently to kazakhstan and kazakhstan with um uh, uh for the department of uh a department of american aid do you see what i mean and um you know one of the points that i made on there was you know that you have to recognize the history of the people but you also have to that not everyone is living the way we're living that the, the problem we've got right now is we're in a little bubble not understanding what's going on abroad and 
moving chess, thinking that we're moving chess pieces along the board. That, that that's actually a, a a bigger problem than most people realize, Osman. Yeah, what you just said there. That so whereas we are, you and I and 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 the people we're working with, look at world events, look at a look at the the uh, the global situation, and then work our way backwards to understand what's just happened in my local neighborhood, right? Yeah. So for example, here's an example I'll give on my social media that I've just been putting up. You've seen it, Osman, because uh, it's got the Coca Nostra track on it, um, Soldiers of Fortune, right? Yeah. It's like to give a local councillor example. So here in the UK, in the city of London, um, in the borough of Hackney, a Labour mayor, the mayor of Hackney, which is an official and very famous London borough, the mayor happens to be a Labour Party mayor. Recently, three weeks ago, had to was suspended from the Labour Party. This is Keir Starmer's party, Tony Blair's party, yeah? The second major party in the UK. He was a mayor of a London borough. He was suspended uh, because he was photographed with another now ex-Labour councillor called Tom Dewey. I can mention his name. This isn't defamation because it's been subject to a criminal conviction. Tom Dewey was found with uh, multiple hundreds of very, very severe and disturbing child abuse images, both on his work laptop, and he was a lab Labour staffer, which means that laptop was going in and out of Westminster, of Parliament. Uh, he used to be a councillor in Hackney. That laptop was going in and out of government buildings. Uh, he's been found guilty of having these horrific and horrendous child abuse images on in his possession. That's Tom Dewey, the former Labour councillor. And the reason the mayor of Hackney was suspended is because after being um, charged and arrested for those images, the mayor of Hackney decided it was fine to be photographed with this man, his friend, that same evening uh, for the uh, at a party. And that's because he was his friend for nine years. And when all this came out, he had to resign as mayor of the Hackney Council. The reason I mention this is a very specific local example, but Swan, as you know, right? So we, your Warrior Creed, yeah. take an example like that and start from the top, as we just did, and say globalists control politicians all the way down to your local council by using compromat, yeah? yeah? Compromising material they use to control them through blackmail so that they can do their bidding all the way down to the bottom. If you're disturbed, for example, by the implement recent implementation of, say, for example, the WEF, the World Economic Forum's 15-minute city uh, prison planet system that they're seeking to introduce right down onto your local level. If you're disturbed in London about these ULES cameras and these 20 mile per hour zones and, uh, uh, and low traffic neighborhoods and uh, the way in which security crack cameras are everywhere and facial recognition and gate recognition technology is all being placed around our cities. That is, by the way, a World Economic Forum. In other words, a globalist technocrat plan. If you're concerned about that, understand that a mayor of a London borough and his friend of nine years, a local councillor in London, a Labour Party staffer, if they've been, if the Labour Party staffer, Tom Dewey, has been found guilty, criminally guilty for possession of child abuse images. By the way, Osman, he escaped prison, right? Yeah. He escaped prison. Okay, I know, you know, obviously people have gone into, uh, gone into prison for holding, for yeah. literally holding photographs or banners saying behead those who insult Islam. I personally know people that went to jail were given a terrorism conviction for yeah. holding a, a banner saying behead those who, who insult Islam. This guy escapes prison, right? And these yeah. were horrific child abuse images. But because imagine how you can control a politician like that, right? Uh, right down to the local level. But you can't understand phenomena like that without zooming out and looking at it globally and understanding the role that Epstein and his criminal network played with WEF-connected globalist, technocratic, transhumanist uh, eugenicists around the world. Epstein was connected to multiple universities where he was funding scientists for uh, the uh, eugenicist and uh, COVID mandate uh, and other such transhumanist agendas. Epstein was running a global blackmail operation. So you start from the top and work it your way down, and you can understand then how uh, the local Labour mayor, Philip Granville, was suspended from the Labour Party for having a friendship of nine years with convicted Tom Dewey, who was convicted for multiple and horrific 
uh, possession of child abuse images. That's how you understand. So because we no longer live in a world where that local councillor is only doing things either for his own sake or for his neighborhood's sake or for his community's sake or, or his political party's sake or even his nation's sake. No. As we've said, Klaus Schwab has already informed us. The kind of world we live in is where he can, Klaus Schwab can sit somewhere, uh, 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 you know, the, the World uh, uh, Health Organization and Tudros, he can sit somewhere where Tony Blair can be sat somewhere else, where George Bush can be sat somewhere else, where Zelensky can be sat somewhere else and where Prince Andrew can be sat somewhere else. But they're all working to concert because all of them are part of what Time Magazine described as a cabal that is working to a specific direction of travel. How do you make sure they all work in that direction of travel in unison? Because you have compromise over them, compromising material that you can use for blackmail to make sure you steer them in that direction. It's why it's so important to understand the global, the local events through a global yeah. lens as well and understand how everything that's happening globally, including with Zelensky, because by the way, Kiev is a known as the BBC itself reported and as radical media has reported, you can go and look it up on majidnawaz.substack.com. Search on that site on radical media. Uh, search Ukraine child trafficking hub. You, you can see uh, BBC's reported this. We've got all the receipts how Ukraine, even from before the war, was known as a child trafficking hub for what? For child organs. So look at the connection now between the trafficking uh, 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 or the underground criminal trafficking of child organs connected with the global eugenesis program and understand what's going on. Understand the links between Zelensky, Ukraine, Nazis, Trudeau in Canada, Tony Blair, uh, Bush. Understand the connections between what happened in Florida with the Nazis protesting and why a Nazi was just applauded in the Canadian parliament and connect it to the COVID mandates, connect it to the war in Ukraine, uh, connect it to FTX, Sam Bankman Freed and the money laundering, laundering operation for the purposes of funding Biden and the Democratic Party in the US to make sure they stay in power. Why? So they can continue with their program of eugenic, eugen, uh, eugenics. Now, now, the sad conclusion is, therefore, that in the West, we are a slave population to globalists who are using technocracy to try and nudge us through psychological manipulation as their guinea pigs to continue doing their bidding. Now, that doesn't mean you obviously this is heavy. A lot of people feel we well, we'll hear this. And of course, we present all the receipts and it and it leads, of course, to shock and anger and sometimes reaction. But we're saying, no, it doesn't mean you react, process the information. And what we're seeking to do is elevate consciousness so that when we proceed, as we do through this uh, show, for example, we don't proceed in a way that continues falling for their traps. Because one of the ways this cabal, or the way this cabal seeks to bring about their change through eugenics and transhumanism is through di uh, Hegelian dialectics, causing divide and conquer in society, causing this intersectionism that Osman, you just mentioned, yeah? yeah, to encourage group identities. So those group identities fight each other so that the people that want to, like chess, yeah, the people who sacrifice a pawn here, sacrifice a bishop here, they remain in charge. By encouraging group identities to fight each other, they remain in charge. While we're arguing over, what's the definition of rape? We're arguing over race, rape, and religion. And yeah. they stay in charge. That's the Hegelian dialect. Uh, it's called, it caused problems, reaction, solution. Problem, reaction, solution. So when you see now what we're just describing, don't fall for that Hegelian dialect and simply react to what we're telling you because you will end up being used as a pawn in somebody else's chess game. What we're suggesting is you understand what's going on and process it, elevate your consciousness and not be used, not allow your identity, racial, religious uh, or any other identity to be weaponized for the purposes of this Hegelian dialect so that we end up fighting each other and they remain in charge and continue marching in their so-called progressive direction of transhumanist technocratic eugenicism. Right. So we've got it. So that's when you understand what's going on, you will react in a way that doesn't further fuel what's going on. But what they're counting on is for us to get so angry that we also react in ways that only perpetuate the problem. Yeah, well, the thing is with this, Margin, it's like the victimhood argument. You know, the, the point where you're like, okay, this, I'm the victim. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the one that's... Uh, the, the reason 
the reason I'm in this situation is because of them. Yeah. So what ends up happening with this is you've got a lot of people that are walking around angry and disconnected. Yeah. Yeah. And what we're talking about here is we're talking about the fact that strangely enough, we've actually got the luxury where we live to to study that vertical and horizontal aspect. And what I mean by that is the historical and then the present mm. to see where we're getting to in the future. Because the issue is that everyone right now, I feel like someone who's been, you're sitting there and everyone's trying to sell you join my club. Mm. Yeah. Uh, our interest rate is better or, you get this free gift. Mm. And as we watch, and, and this is a thing to, to watch from a distance without you know, without involvement in it from the, the perspective, I'm talking about the the wider things that happen. So things like the Russell brand situation where we where we look at it and we go, okay, one thing we're aware of is that this information has sat on a desk. Around a decade. For X amount of years. Yeah. yeah. Um, not because we heard it from on the news or on the radio, but because we actually awesome. know from directly from the person who sat there with the information. So then we ask ourselves, we okay, well, we can see this um this game of consequence being played. Yeah. So even when the Epstein or the Weinstein situation, yeah, you know, Epstein was, we we had this discussion when the Weinstein situation was ha happening. It was like, okay, what's what's happened that the this phenomenon of opening the door has happened now? Remember, it, this all the way through Hollywood, yeah. Burt Lancaster, um, back in those days, had a history of uh, not just women but men as well. Yeah, yeah, and that was in, but it was kept under cover. Mm. Yeah, and the point I'm making with this is, what development was it whereby someone pushed that button and said, "Okay, time to get the scapegoat." And it's always interesting. Don't watch the scape go. Look back at the stables or the farm. Go, okay, why have they left the door open? Because it's going to take a little bit longer for the horses and the bulls to figure out that the door is open. You know, while you're chasing the goat, you're actually losing the real money behind you. Mm. And this is the thing with this, that what we're seeing is when you've got this the 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 sacrifice and we see that movement from the old money to the new money yeah so let me say that again the old money to the new money because we've you have to remember we we we're going from the financial model that was lucrative post world war with the nations to a more concentrated financial model with um these like hyper oligarchs whatever you want to call them yep. yeah the the billionaire class the the billionaire the the trillionaire class probably is yeah. you you've got yeah. yeah guys that are yeah guys who also become um and it's, it's funny because there's a hadith there's a saying of the uh prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that towards the end of time the opinions of idiots will be taken. Yep. Yeah. And um, first off, I thought, yeah, well, you remember post 9-11, I think like, even Elton John gave his opinion. I was like, what the hell? Did you, yeah. Obviously, you know how many how many idiots we've had to sit in a room. <laughs> but who, the thing is... Who, who proceed to tell us about our bread and butter. Yeah. And, and, but this is the thing with this, isn't it? It's like, you've got all of these people giving opinions... But if an opinion isn't informed, and even thinking that um, 
because yeah, to even think, to even learn how to think, yeah, is it's not about noise. There's a there's an aspect of introspection, but also that introspection has to understand that that the starting point of it is I know that I don't know. Now the point um, what we're making with this is that where we're sitting right now, the information sources, and this is what they, they did not expect us to do this. They did not expect when they brought the 98 year old in, when Zelensky brought that 98 year old in, it should have just been, here's a 98 year old that fought the Russians. Yep. But the problem even with that logic is that if you go back to those days, those are the Russians that literally stopped the Nazi machine. They were our allies. Yeah. <laughs> so he sacrificed heavily to stop the Nazi machine. Sacrificed more than any. Remember, that was Stalin's argument, wasn't yep. it? Yeah. Stalin's argument was we're the guys that did more than the rest of you. To, we saved you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what this comes down to is that they expected to be able that they expect to be able to say something and you just take it. Yeah. And the problem is part of that confidence doesn't come from the fact that you're stupid. It comes from the fact that, well, you've never had to search. If you, if the only top, if the only place that you've played hide and seek is in your house and I go and hide in your garden, you're not going to find me. Mm. Because you've got no reference. You've got that there's no pre existing experience where you're going to be, even if I am in your garden, you find your way out to your garden. You, if I've climbed a tree, you haven't looked up. You've just been, you're used to looking around. Yeah. This is exactly where they've got us right now. And um, it's sad to say, Marjorie, because what I've seen with this is. Yeah, the individual that I, I spoke to you about the other day, who's um, now indulging in the in in the dark arts, in the dark arts, so to speak. Um, you know, you've got someone who was literally—I was, I was saying something. Yeah, charity giving guy who used to go out feed the homeless mm. and sit with the homeless. That's the level, and now. He's out there because what, what what ends up happening is there's a story, isn't there, that of the king where the witch comes and she puts the poison in the well and everyone becomes insane and the king the king is aware that he's the only one that's sane, but the people are pointing at him saying that he's insane. Yeah. So one day he gets his glass, goes out to the well and drinks. Because why be, what's the point? Yeah. And this is what, this is what they expect. You know, the 15 minute cities, you know, oh, I'm constrained. I, I, I can't go anywhere. And then all of a sudden Oculus 3 comes out and it's like, yeah. why would you want to walk when you can yeah. fly? Yeah. Do you see what I mean? And you know, that's when you, all of a sudden you find out, oh, they're legalizing this and they're legalizing that. And you know, oh, see, we're getting more freedoms. They've mm. legalized oh, cannabis. Oh, and join them is the, is the mentality you're describing. That's it. And well, what ends up happening with this mod is that we're, get, we're getting to that stage because the youth themselves, yeah, the idea of that, because I heard this word, Everyone likes to throw this word around, narcissism. They're a narcissist, they're a narcissist, they're a narcissist. And I I, I said to um, one of our boys this morning who was accusing his wife of being a narcissist, and I was like, I said to him, ah, wait, wait, wait. I go, look, uh, this, like, I said amateur psychology, but, but then I took it back and said, no, the problem here is, even in the work that we were doing pre this with um, forensic psychologists, mm. and you'd get you'd get their findings and you'd have the discussion. And um, I remember they 
you'd always get the diagnosis the individual's a narcissist that'd be the first starting point but when you actually went into it when you actually started breaking it down what you'd find was that what they were perceiving as narcissism was a veil of what the individual wanted the system to see but behind it you'd find a lot of vulnerability and it was the vul- it was the vulnerability that created so so that if the shell was very very thick often you found a vulnerable individual that once you could get past the veil you could get to the childlike element within but the problem with the narcissism label was that you were only reacting to the facade mm. yeah you're only ever reacting to the facade which now, what works. happens? You're not really addressing the problem. You're not really addressing the problem, but the, the problem is with the system now. If you can separate an individual and say to them, "You can entertain yourself to death," yeah, while having a birth rate that has gone down, collapsing, you, collapsing. Why you got a birth rate that is collapsing? You've got. What you end up with is exactly what you want, which is the troublemakers wither away. They disappear. And you're sat doing whatever you want to do because you're already hoarding. You have to remember that we're not in this situation because there isn't enough food or enough money or enough wealth to go around. There's plenty. Mm. And in fact, it's sadder than that because yeah somewhere there's people starving there's and 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 there is plenty of food there's plenty there's plenty of food there's plenty of water food mountains that are there to keep prices up yeah common agricultural policy style part of the eu this has been policy for years yeah there's plenty of food um now uh bro we're we're running out of time so what i'm going to do is uh thank everybody for their patience we've held a good audience through this uh we appreciate very much you following this show uh warrior creed live stream of course it, it's not lost on us that uh rumble recently uh, has made a taken a stance against the formal request from parliament in london where we're broadcasting from uh to block certain programs or streams on their platform and rumble ceo has said uh, that we will stand by our creators and not not accept these um uh, orwellian requests coming from parliaments to shut speakers down so uh, we appreciate both the fact that, uh, as it appears to date, our stream remains uninterrupted on Rumble every Tuesday, 3 p.m. to 10 a.m., but we only are able to do what we do because of you spreading by word of mouth to people to follow this show. And the reason I emphasize word of mouth is retweeting it, um, posting about it uh, on any form of online platform as good as it is. And we encourage you to do it because of the extent of the shadow banning we're facing. Uh, we do encourage you by word of mouth to tell people simply to go to rumble. And if they wish to keep up with analysis of current of modern current geopolitical affairs and have a frame of reference through which to understand what's going on while remaining at ease, because when understanding what's going on is the first part of remaining calm when dealing with it. Of course, a lot of the anxiety that people face is because the problem is they don't know what's going on and they're trying to deal with it. And it makes them anxious because of course they don't know if what they're trying to do is going to work. But you know a lot better if you understand what's going on, whether or not what you're trying to do will work or not. And that get, brings you a bit more peace and tranquility inside as well. So spread by word of mouth, please, to friends and family that everybody come and join us here on this Rumble live stream, 3 p.m. UK time, 10 a.m. EST every Tuesday. Because uh, as, as we hope by now you've seen, we tend to set the trends on that frame of reference and analysis to understand world events and help process months or years ahead of time what's going on so that by the time you end up with a standing ovation for an actual Nazi SS officer in the Canadian parliament, you, our beloved uh, readers, viewers, and listeners have already arrived at that point where you know uh, what's been going on. You know that we've been uh, deceived into funding militarily supporting uh, the Azov Nazi battalion in Ukraine with Zelensky there, uh, front man nearly there as some form of 
uh, puppet on a string for Kolomoisky. We've been speaking about this for long enough that this news then ends up being contextualized for you and you're able to better articulate how such a thing could have happened. So please do uh, spread uh, through word of mouth to all your friends and family uh, 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 the benefits of, uh, of, of staying in touch with us uh, on Warrior Creed. And as I say, we appreciate the fact that at, up until now, we've, despite all the interference, uh, the signal interference, the shadow banning on all the various platforms, including, by the way, uh, our viewer figures for this very show itself. If you look at how rapidly and widely they fluctuate, going in one example from over 90K down to 7K within the space of a week and then leaping back up to 50K makes no sense. That is just algorithmically or mathematically highly, highly improbable to the point of impossible for it to jump that way. That's just not natural patterns. So we understand what's going on. We're not going to let it deter us. We believe our signal will always be stronger than their noise. But one thing we do rely on is on your support. Uh, encourage people to tune in here and to go to Radical Media on majidnawaz.substack.com to get the written versions of uh, what we discuss here and also to get last week's podcast of this show, which we're now releasing right up to date only within the week. So it's no longer going to be longer than that. So for example, this show within the week will be sent as a podcast file to all the people on uh, Radical Media. Osman, any last words before we go? I, well, look, guys, you've got the luxury right now. We, all of us have the luxury to, that what we said before, yeah, the vertical and the horizontal from that perspective of, oh my God, I just did the cross. So, yeah, <laughs> but literally, oh, if yeah. you want to get, yeah, so think about it as a sphere with it, with yeah, a... as, yeah, whatever, yeah. So, what you've got with this is literally historically, and then you've got what's going on right now. And, and the, the point is with this that that when you start looking and you start it, when you start discovering these things, it's it's a gift in itself, isn't it, Marge? Oh, okay. This is what's going on there. And um, there's a lot to be discovered yet. Uh, yeah. That's the other point with this, because a lot's opening up with everything that's going on. 2024 is going to be very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. On so, that note, we'll see you all next week. Thank you very much. As always, the radical Majid Nawaz and my brother, the infamous Usman Raja for Warrior Creed. Take care. I'm about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Witness the strength Terrorize the jam like troops in Pakistan. Dream on. 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 Dream on.